What is a dry point? It's a type of intaglio printmaking process, but it's also a monoprint process because no two are ever the same. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to make a dry point that is truly unique because instead of the traditional process of putting black ink onto white paper, we're going to put white ink onto black paper. The design can be created on paper first. This is a monoprint plate by Graphics, and there is a film over the top of it that needs to be removed. Uh, you can place it right over your sketch and then tape the plate over the drawing. Now, a pointed tool is used to scratch into the surface. For safety in the classroom, I recommend using a small scratch art blade. Insert it into a handle and works like a scribe with multiple edges for making thin or thicker lines. Just enough pressure needs to be used to scratch the surface. It's not necessary to cut it deeply. Now, etching is much like pen and ink drawing. You can use the same techniques stippling, cross-hatching, contour lines. These are used to create shading and texture. Sandpaper can also be used to create large areas of very soft texture. And the more texture that's created, the more ink will collect in the lines and the wider the area will appear. Here's a finished plate. Now for best results, rinse away the etching dust under running water and dry completely before moving on to printing. Dry point prints are best created using the heavy pressure produced by a press so that the ink is drawn out of the etched lines onto the paper. Etching ink, and we're going to be using a Kua etching ink today, it's water soluble. With soap and water, you can clean up your hands, your tools, your clothes, your plate. It just makes it very, very easy. It doesn't need to be worked with a brayer the way that uh, block printing ink does. You can use it straight from the jar. I'm going to cover my finger with a little piece of cheesecloth, dip a little bit of ink out, and we're just gonna dab it all over the plate. So now for the wiping stage. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a piece of old mat board and just scrape away any ink that I can that's laying on the surface. This ink is nice and clean and can go right back into the jar. Our goal is to keep the ink in the etched areas and remove it from the areas that we want to reveal the black paper. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the cheesecloth and start removing the ink using a circular motion and just medium to light pressure. The one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna use a paper towel. They tend to leave little bits of debris and nothing that has lint. Once I have it wiped, I'm gonna do a final wipe with a special wiping cloth that's been designed by Akua. And it is meant exactly for this use. And don't forget to wipe the edges. Now, I could make many prints from this plate, but I would never be able to wipe it in exactly the same manner. So each print is going to be slightly different. Now it's time to print. Place another sheet of paper onto the bed of the press and place the plate ink side up on top of it. Mark the corners, and then set the plate aside for a moment. Now you need to mark where your printmaking paper is going to line up. I happen to know that this is about an eight and a half inch wide paper, so I'm just going to mark that. And I need about, oh, an inch and three quarters border. Now the paper should be damp to help draw the ink out of the etched lines. I have a piece of paper soaking. This is Stonehenge paper for printmaking. I'm going to put it between the two pieces of blotting paper. I need to remove some of the water, otherwise the ink will start to dissolve and it will blur a bit. Again, you don't want to use paper towels or anything that might leave some residue. And now it's time to make a print. So let's place the ink side up right in the spot we need it to be. And then we're going to take our printmaking paper and line it up with those lines that I drew. I'm gonna move this up a little bit closer and put our blankets back down. All right, now turn the wheel. Use a nice 
even motion. Okay, let's see what we have here. Move the blankets back out of the way and pull the paper back. And there we have our final print. So if you're interested in dry point printmaking, I highly recommend the dramatic effects that you get when you make a white print onto dark paper. And for all the materials that I've demonstrated today, including our 906 press, go to dickblick.com where you'll find a PDF that will walk you step by step through this lesson plan.